And welcome back to In My Humble Opinion with Charles Lewis and Maxilia Robinson, as always, on 101 Jams, the People's Station. And so joining us right now um, gives me great pleasure uh, to have in studio with us um, a, a gentleman here to uh, talk talk a little politics with us, uh, but talk from a perspective that, uh, that a lot of us um, may not be too familiar with. And so that's why it is such a joy and a privilege to have him here right now. We have Mr. Sidney Smith, and he is the co-chair of the Green Party of Virginia and also a delegate for the Green Party of Virginia. How are you today, sir? I am very fine and, and very honored that you've asked me to come. I'm really delighted to be able to speak to you and to your listeners today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so to start, um, again, you, know, you and I briefly uh, chatted about the fact that uh, uh, you know a, a lot of voters um, aren't aware of the options uh, besides the main two, the, the major two. So I wanted you to expound on that to give them uh, your option. Well, you know, it's it's interesting that there have always been independent parties throughout American mm-hmm. history, but um, particularly during our lifetimes, uh, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party have so dominated the political discussion that uh, people have just sort of internalized the notion that somehow that's how it's supposed to be, Mm -hmm. as though there were Democrats or Republicans uh, back in the beginning or as though it were somehow written into the Constitution. But, of course, that's not the case at all. In fact, the the founders who wrote the Constitution were kind of hoping there wouldn't be any political parties. That was Mm -hmm. what they were aiming for. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that didn't work out. That that ended almost immediately. Mm -hmm. But because of this dominance by these two major parties who now... Uh, you, you know how it how it works when people are in power, then other people want to cooperate with that power. So media and newspapers and business leaders and uh, labor leaders have all sort of oriented themselves toward this notion that you've just got these two political parties, mm. and uh, that's a real problem now because over the years. Each of them has been trying to capture the center, and what they've done is sort of morphed into one another mm. in many important respects. Mm. So that now, politically, what's most important in the United States is not the differences between the Democrats and the Republicans. It's the similarities. It's right. the things they agree on that really ought to be drawing our attention. So, so let me ask you a question about that. Um, from, from your point of view, or are you speaking for your party's point of view, of course, um, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because um, our evolution kind of caused us to sort of simplify and just split into two factions, or do you think it's more of it was more money driven as far as uh, one power and, and and another power kind of trying to you know consolidate or you know uh, like why do you think that, that that we got to a two party system exactly? Well, part of it is structural. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way our uh, politics works for executive offices, it's what's called first past the post. It's whoever gets the most votes is the winner. Mm -hmm. And that's very different from uh, a lot of democratic systems around the world where you have proportional representation. So just to take an example, there was just, you know, as you know, a big big upset in Great Britain over their vote Mm -hmm. to leave the European Union. And a lot of people were shocked here when their prime minister resigned. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, you mean if a leader makes a mistake, they resign? That's a novel <laughs> idea. We don't do that in the United States, do we? Um, and, but now there's a new prime minister, and how did that happen? They didn't have an election. Mm-hmm. Well, because uh, back when they did have an election, uh, their parliament got uh, divided up proportionally among all these different political parties, including, by the way, the Green Party mm-hmm. in England. Um, and so this proportional representation allows all these different points of view to have a voice in government. And the way our government was designed way back in the 18th century, mm-hmm. um, it's much, much harder to do that. And this is one of the things that the Green Party aims to fix. And there are ways to address that within our constitutional system, and we'd like to see that happen. Instant mm-hmm. runoff voting is one of the most important. Okay. Uh, I just have a question for you um, with regard to the similarities uh, that you mentioned between the Democratic and Republican Party. Mm-hmm. Can you just kind of um, dis- explain why that's important. I may be jumping the gun here into <laughs> what was coming, ne- what, were you gonna, what you were going to say next, but could you kind of elaborate on that? I think the most important thing to understand about the Republican and Democratic parties is that now and for the last, well, for throughout our lifetimes, um, each of them is equally a party of war and Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Um, both of them are essentially funded and in bed with uh, Wall Street and the big banks. Um, Trump may be a little less so, he's a little bit of a maverick, but certainly his party, and absolutely if you look at the Democratic Party, Hillary Clinton is uh, 
uh, in lockstep with Goldman Sachs uh, and uh, uh, the Obama administration. The first thing he did was to hire uh, Larry Summers. And uh, uh, so the big banks really are the power players. They are the, they are the ones who call the shots in both those political parties. And both political parties are committed to a militarist foreign policy that has us spending uh, 10 times as much uh, on our military. And let me kind of unwrap that a little yeah. bit. If you take the amount we spend on our military, it is more than the next 10 countries combined mm. in terms of how much they spend on military. And most of those are our allies. So uh, the United States is profoundly committed to a war posture and has been for a very long time. Right now, we're still fighting the longest war in U.S. history in Afghanistan, and both parties are equally committed to that. So those are the two big similarities that simply yeah. don't get talked about because how are you going to talk about them? The Republicans and Democrats agree about them, so there's nothing to yeah. say if all you think is that we've got to have a Democrat or a Republican. So, um, so, so then, Sidney, how do you respond then to the voter who, who says, well, we got to be tough on defense, and we have to, you know, be... Uh, be the world police, you know, is one term that's used, or, or those who say, you know, as long as we regulate the banks, then, you know, uh, then we can control this thing and we can still share, you know, with the common man. What's, what's your response to that? Well, uh, the bank, the banks are happy to be regulated, provided they get to write the regulations. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. If we're going to regulate the banks, we want somebody who's not the banks doing the regulation writing, don't we? I mean, you don't want the mm -hmm. fox in charge of the hen house. But since the banks own both big political parties, that's never going to happen. So, yeah, the big banks should be regulated, but it won't happen under the Democrats or the Republicans. Mm -hmm. What led directly to the great economic crash in 2008-2009 was Bill Clinton's conniving with the Republican-led Congress to deregulate the bank and repeal the banks and repeal Glass-Steagall, which had been in place since the Great Depression, precisely so as to prevent what actually happened in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Hillary Clinton, of course, is no different in terms of her relationship with the big mm -hmm. banks. So we actually need to, uh, we need to do a number of things, and this is part of the Green Party platform, and, and it's very easy. There's some lovely bullet points if you go to jill2016.com, and Jill Stein is our presumptive nominee. Uh, her platform is very straightforward. We need to um, uh, bring back public banking. Do you know that until mm -hmm. the 19th Shoot, now let me see. It was at least up until the 60s. You could go down to the post office and open a bank account, and that was where you kept your savings, and that was where you cashed your checks, and it didn't cost you much, and they paid interest on your loans. It's still that way in most of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, more than 90% of the developed world has public banking through the post office. But, of mm -hmm. course, we got rid of it in the United States, and now we have predatory payday lenders who are owned by, guess who, those same great big banks. Yeah, yeah. So we need to break them up. We need to bring back public banking. We need to make it possible for people to conduct their business without mm -hmm. paying usurious interest rates. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, neither the Republicans nor the Democrats are even going to talk about doing right. that, simply now, not on their radar. Now, and what about the political process, the, the, the actual uh, worth of the vote, though, you know, for the person who says, well, I'll just find which candidate shares the most values with the Green Party because I don't want to waste my vote on the Green Party. Sure. And there's, there's a couple of things to say about that. One of them is a lot of people think of the Green Party Actually, there's a lot of confusion about the Green Party anyway. A lot of us think that we're like the Sierra Club or Greenpeace, right? Mm -hmm. And both got green in them, right? right it's right. about ecology. But mm -hmm. those aren't political parties. Those are activist groups. They're advocacy groups. They're non-governmental organizations. They're doing very important work, but they're not political parties. A political party has one job, and that's to run candidates and to affect public policy. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do. Um, now... The other big confusion is to think of us as being somehow, you know, on this scale of left to right where you've got the Republicans on the right and, and the, maybe you've got uh, libertarians even further to the right, although that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. debatable. Um, and you've got Democrats supposedly on the left and then the Green Party over to the left of the Democrats, right? Mm. But this whole left-right thing doesn't even apply to most of the issues that we need to address. Mm. Mm. The Green Party is not a lefter party of the Democrats in the sense of being, you know, the same but more progressive. Mm. The Democrats aren't the same as the Greens, only more practical. Mm. That's what they'd like you to believe. Right, right. But in fact, we don't fit into uh, that scale. And so when people talk about, well, I think I better vote for the Democrat because either a Democrat or Republican is going to win, and so I'm going to go with the pragmatic choice, mm -hmm. my response to that is unless you're voting for the changes you want to have happen, 
it's not rational to think that those changes are ever going to take place. Mm -hmm. Because we're a democracy. The only tool of self-government is the ballot box. If you can have your vote, in effect, bullied away from you by fear, you know, vote for Hillary or you get Trump, mm. um, then you are never going to be able to actually practice self-government. Yeah. And it's interesting, if you go back and look at history, historically the way change happens is not by incrementally working from inside the system. It's by challenging the system. It's by going out into the street. It's by casting your vote for what you really believe and forcing politicians to pay attention. And you can't do that unless you're willing to cast an honest vote for what you honestly believe. That's self-government. That's what we're about. Okay, okay. So, Sydney, what we'll do is we'll just take a quick break right here. And when we get back, um, how, how about we jump into the to the core issues, to the actual, say, uh, hot-button topics that that, uh, that people use as, you know, as, as those catchphrases and, and those hot-button words that, that always gets people riled up. So those who don't know where the Green Party stand, we can make it clear for them. Absolutely. Right. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back on In My Humble Opinion with Sydney Smith of the Green Party of Virginia. 